All right, hello once again, Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And as part of the Rankin Technical College AWD 1111 database driven web development class, I've decided to go back and do some review as we start. I've gone out to the Valley of Code, which is a uh, site with a bunch of PDFs by a developer named Flavio Copes. And uh, I've downloaded, amongst other things, his HTML handbook, CSS handbook. JavaScript handbook, React handbook, and Node.js handbook. And while I'm here, I do want to make sure that I grab that one as well. Okay? All right. And now it says updated on here. So I don't know if that's just been updated, so we'll see. All right. And I'm going through, just starting from the beginning, and I'm going through the HTML handbook. What I did in the last lecture, which is the first in this series, is I went through about the first third of his PDF. So I'm on page 22 of 74. All right. And now we're talking about the style tag. Remember, there are three ways that you can add CSS into. There are three ways that you can add CSS into your document. Here's one of them right here. All right. So if I go through here now, and let's go through here and let's see. It says no folder open. So let's open a folder. Let's see. In fact, I'm going to do a file and I'm going to, I'm just going to close everything. So I'm starting all over again. So let's do a file save. All right. And then let's do a file somewhere at the bottom will be an exit. All right. Now I'm going to go back to this test thing that's in here. And you may or may not have told you this. I'm sure otherwise, if you, those of you had Mr. Gudmus did, he did. But if I go in here and do a CMD and go out to the folder, this test that I have right here. So I'm going to just come out here and say CD to desktop backslash test. There I am. So if I do an, an LS, for if I do a DIR, it's going to show me my CSS and my images, etc. But if I come through here now and say code dot It'll open up Visual Studio Code in that directory. So now I'm here. All right. Why did I tell you that? Because I want to show you very quickly. Here's our index.html file. All right. Here we're adding an external CSS file, right? So if I go here, there's the file. And if I open that up and I just say body, why it does that, but so if I say body and I'll say background, I think there's salmon. Okay, like that. All right, and I just save this. All right, now when I come back in here into my index.html file, and I'm going to tell it basically to bring this up in live server, you'll notice that the background is salmon colored. Okay, no biggie, but just so you've seen that. All right, and I have no, nothing in here, so let's just put in a garbage paragraph all right i think i can actually do this but let's see can i say lorem 25 yeah it'll put in some lorem ipsum text then all right i like to be able to see everything on the screen so i'm just going to do that oops there we go all right so i've got all that now if I save and I right mouse click and I again open it with live server, there's my text. Nothing big there. All right. Now I can also come in and right inside of here, I can come in and put in style tags. All right. So I can say, for example, color. So for my font color, let's just say uh, pound FFF and we'll make that white. All right. Now, that's not going to work. Um, let's say for our paragraphs. All right, we'll make the color white. There we go. Okay, I'm going to save again. I'm going to come back into, oops, I'm going to come back again into live server. Let me get rid of that. I know stuff's hanging up, but I don't know why, but it's fine. And you'll notice that it's changed to white. All right, what if I want this L that's in here 
just that L. All right, maybe you've seen this in like kid stories where it says once upon a time and the O is really big. All right, so I, then I can also come in and there's a third way that I can come in and add this. So for this L, I'm going to put a span here and I'm going to say style equal. I, I'm probably going to screw this up, but we're going to try it anyway. And I'll put in font size 3 rem. Again, I might be screwing this up, but I'm, I'm trying here. So we'll just do it like that. So boom. And I'm going to put in just the L right there for lorem. And we'll see whether or not this worked. Okay, so I'm going to come back to here. Oh, doesn't like it, so I screwed. There you go. So you see that? I have just shown you the three different ways that we can add CSS to a file. This first way is what's typically referred to as inline CSS. In other words, we want to change an element. And you've heard this kind of shtick before, but the idea is that's recommended that you don't use that because what you're doing is you are now mixing your CSS right into your HTML. People still do it, but it's recommended that you don't. So that's inline. All right. This right here with this style tag, this is typically referred to as internal CSS, and that's going to affect this page. That's better than inline CSS, but still not as good as doing it the top way that we see right here. And that is external CSS. And that is affect potentially the whole site. So what the recommendation is, is that you use external CSS whenever possible. There may be a very valid reason that on a certain page you use internal CSS, but you should try to never, if you can help it, use inline CSS. That was a little longer than I planned, but at least we've gone through these major components of this in here now. All right. All right. The base tag. It says it's used to set a base URL for all relative URLs on a page. And I'm not going to lie to you. I've never used it before. All right, so take a look at it, look it up if you have an interest in it. Meta tags I've talked about already. They're typically used for SEO, which is search engine optimization. Although many people will tell you that the SEO that's that's used, you know, basically today uses meta tags very little, if at all. All right. So here's an example. There's the description tag. And if you do put that in there. You put that in typically at the top. All right. I don't know if there actually is a real order per se of these meta tags in here, but I could put that in. And for the description, what you should put in here is something that actually describes the site because search engines that still use these tags will go through and when they're basically grading your site to see where it's going to go, on search pages, it checks to make sure what you say in here is what you're actually putting in your body section. All right. And I've given examples, and I, I, this is something I'd heard. I never saw this online or anything, but I'd heard that after 9 11, now what, 20, 20, almost 21 years ago next month, all right, that what a lot of people were doing is they were mentioning 9 11 in their content for their description even when their site had nothing to do with 9-11, which is not good. But that content that's in there, this is the kind of thing that you should put in. All right. And when I say this is, so I might put in here test web page or something like that. All right. I'd have to think more about it. Okay. And it says this might, and notice might, be used by Google to generate the page description and the result pages. All right. Well, with that, the key component of that is, again, it says don't ask me how because the way that the search engine optimization works by Google 
by Bing, by Yahoo, etc. All right, most people don't know because it's kept secret from us. The char set I already mentioned to you, the character encoding that's being used. This robots is an interesting tag because if you've got robots in there, all right, it says whether to index a page or not. So if you put in here content equal no index, typically what that means is the, the search engine, when it's going through your site, which is typically referred to as spidering your site, when it spiders your site, it'll skip that page. All right. And they go through. There's a bunch of stuff that you can put in here. So the viewport I'd already mentioned says is used to tell the browser to set the page width based on the device width. All right. And there's other things that you can put in here as well, as you can see. All right, then we get to the body. That's the good stuff, so to speak. The body element is where we put the stuff that will actually appear on the page. All right, we have all the tags that define the content of the page. All right, the next thing that's discussed here is block elements versus inline elements. And to show you something, and again, you probably have all seen this already, but just to be sure... Let's go back to our web page. So I'm going to go back here to Visual Studio Code. I am going to do a file save. Probably was already, but I'm going to save it. All right. Then I'm going to jump back here, and I'm going to refresh, and that's everything. But when I right mouse click on here and I choose Inspect, what you should notice is if I take my mouse and I come in here in my body and I highlight my paragraph tag you'll notice that it spans the entire line now there's a little bit of margin and padding put in here but the point is other than that the whole thing is highlighted why because paragraphs are block level elements so by default they typically will have a blank line above them and below them so if i come through here and i add another paragraph so let's just grab the paragraph that we have and let's copy it so let's grab it here copy it to the clipboard and paste it in again save all right and it's going to look just like the other one right so there's the other one but the point is now notice that when i grab either paragraph tag it's taking up the entire thing that is a block level element there are several block level elements. The best known block level elements are probably the div tag and the paragraph tag, but there are other ones. All right. That's as opposed to an inline element. Guess what? We see an inline element here because if I highlight that letter L, what you'll notice that was done with a span tag, the, it doesn't highlight the whole line. It just highlights that particular letter. All right, so as whereas block level basically is going to encompass the entire line, inline tags don't. If we look at another one, so let's come back in here. Just I'm just trying to, again, this is all review. But if I come back here and I'm going to grab this code that's right here and I want to bold it. All right, I could do the B tag, but that's that's poor. We'll use strong tags. Why? Because that's what we're supposed to be using. All right. And I'm going to grab this, and I'm going to cut it. And then I'm going to grab this and paste it back in. Save and go back again. And I'm going to look at this one more time. And what you should notice, it's kind of hard to see, but this is bolded now. But if I highlight that, all right, so if I highlight what is bolded in here, what you will notice, if I can find it, all right, in my second paragraph here, there it is. All right, so somewhere, there's my strong tag. You'll notice that, again, all that's highlighted, all right, all that's highlighted in there are those three words because it's another inline element. So, What's the difference? Block elements do not allow other elements next to them, to the left or the right by default. Inline do.
All right, it says it also lies in the visual properties we can edit using CSS, which we'll talk about later. You can have inline elements within block elements. You cannot have block elements within an inline element. All right, so tags that interact with text. Maybe I'll speed this up a little bit. Here's the paragraph tag. Paragraph tag, again, is a block level element. The span, on the other hand, is an inline element. I've already shown you examples of each one of these. We've got two paragraphs in our simple HTML document, and they both have in there a span tag, which takes that first letter and makes it bigger. All right. The BR tag is a line break. It's a, a simple tag that has no ending. You'll sometimes see the BR tag put in there like this with BR with a slash especially if some software will automatically put that in for you. All right, but it's not needed. Heading tags, again, this should be review. And yeah, they show it like that. Let's just put it in here ourselves. So we're going to go back to our document. And I'm going to come in here and say, H1, this is an H1 header. I shouldn't say header. It's really a heading tag. Okay, and then let's go in here. We've got it all six of them in here now. Two, 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 three, three. Three, four, <clears throat> four, and you can see when I change one of them how the other one is just changing automatically. Five, five, and six, six. Now when I go back in here and I save and I jump back in here, you'll notice what do we have here, okay? Here's our different tags. Now if I want, I can close this. So you can see them. But there's the different sizes. Let me put it back down to 100%. There we go. So there's H1, H2, etc. All right, all the way through. Now, I have found that, that as I'm developing web pages, it's very rare that I will use anything less than an H3 tag. Again, there may be a very valid reason. Plus, what's recommended is that you only have one H1 tag per web page. And that H1 tag should really show what this page is about. All right, again, I'm just giving you recommendations here. All right, so as we jump in here, or as we continue on in here, all right, next, what you see is the strong tag. I've already mentioned that to you. Let me let me quickly, between 5.5 five here and 5.6, let's just look at all of these, okay? All right, so as we jump into here, as we put in a uh, paragraph, and I'm going to say the strong oops, following text was bolded. All right. And, and then I'm going to copy this down. I'm going to have this in here four times. I'm going to put in here a, a B tag. And you'll notice it automatically changes this. And here I'm going to put in an M tag. And instead of saying it was bolded, I'm going to say is italicized. All right. And this one I'll just put in an I. Now, what you're going to notice, I'm going to save this, so a file save, and I'm going to jump back into here. And what you'll notice if you look at it, it says the following text was bolded, and it is. And the following text was italicized, and it is. All right, so what's the difference between these? Using the bold tag is old school. It's recommended that you don't use it anymore, and it has to do a lot with people who have who are blind who have basically website readers for them 
you have no guarantee that the B tag will be handled universally amongst different browsers. So that's been replaced with the strong tag. I know it's a little more typing. It's typing six letters versus one, but it's considered better style. Same thing in here. The old school way of doing this was the B tag for bold and the I tag for italics. Now today we will be using the strong tag for bold, the M tag for emphasis or italicizing. All right, all right. Quotes, the block quote, let me just put it this way. Unless you've got a real good reason, all right, block quotes shouldn't even be used. They do apply some margin, all right, but, and there may be a reason for doing it, but you can typically do what you want to do with quotes by using CSS. Horizontal line is an HR for horizontal rule. So if we do come in here and let's jump back into here, and before we've got this, let, let's surround these headings. All right, so let's surround those with an HR tag. So around both of them is an HR tag. And you'll notice there they are, here and here. Now, there's nothing that says these have to be 100% 100, 100 width. They are by default, as you can see, but they don't have to be. You can use CSS and change the width. We could, again, do it using a span tag. We're not going to. Why? Because that's a poor way of doing things. All right. Code blocks, as it says, if you want to show code, yeah, you typically will use monoface because that ends up um, basically putting things in a, in a, fo a font that looks code-like. All right. Pre-tag. It says this typic tag is typically wrapped in a pre-tag. I'm not going to go into that right now, but I am going to say this, that you've already seen this, that if I go back in here, and I come in and I write, let's, let's add another paragraph here. And I put this, this, okay, is, well, a, oh, look at that, all this stuff is, is automatically on here. This is a test paragraph. All right, you've already seen this. But if I come through here and if I add enter here and here and here and here, it's going to still put it all on one line. So you've seen how we can change that by adding BR tags in here. But that's a lot of work. All right. So what we also can do is we can come in here and we can add pre tags. Like that. Okay, and I'm going to save this, and what I want you to look at here is, notice this is a test paragraph. The pre-tag basically pre-formats, so it says however you put it in, all right, however you inputted this, just use that. And you'd notice, hopefully you notice too, that the font changed as well. All right. Our lists, we've got unordered lists, ordered lists, and definition lists. This is the way I always explain these. So imagine that I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put in, I'm going to put an H2 tag in. And I'm going to put, uh, let's bake cookies. All right. So how about let's bake chocolate chip cookies now i'm going to take all the stuff that i've done previous to this all this other stuff and i'm going to come in and just comment it out all right so i'm going to comment all this out until where we are right here there we go doesn't like something oh because i've already got tags in here so Um, yeah, that's pretty good. So if I save this right now, hopefully the only thing I have in here is the Let's Bake Cookies. Good. And it looks like I did not comment out one paragraph that's in here. That's okay. We'll leave that out. We'll leave that in there. Now, I think you'd agree 
that if I come through here and I say, I'm going to put an H3 tag in that says ingredients. Now, I don't know what ingredients go in here, but I'm going to make a list of ingredients. And I'm going to say chocolate chips. Let's just keep these with the LI. We, this is one time I don't mind putting these on the same line. So chocolate chips. I don't know, butter, and we'll say uh, eggs. I'm just making this up. I don't know what goes in this. All right. So we'll save that. We'll go take a look at it, and you'll notice what's in here. Okay. Why am I telling you this? Because technically, the list of ingredients, the order in which we make these ingredients doesn't matter. So I could reverse this, and I could have eggs first, then butter, then chocolate chips. That's not that's not a problem. But if I come through here and I make an ordered list, so these are unordered. The order does not matter. But now I'm going to come in here and I'm going to make an ordered list. And I'm going to say, get a 9 by 13 pan. Grease the pan. Preheat the oven to 350 degrees. Combine. So let's change this to uh, 12 ounces of chocolate chips. One stick. Whoops. One stick butter, and four eggs. I'm making this up. All right, so combine chocolate chips, eggs, and butter in a, bo a bowl. Next, add bowl contents to pan. Finally, cook in oven for 15 minutes. Okay, I'm going to save this. So file, save, jump back again. And you see that unlike before, where we had an unordered list where the order doesn't matter, in here with an ordered list, the order does matter, all right? If I reverse the order here, it would not work, all right? Okay, the other one is a definition list, which I personally very rarely use, but we've got in here what? It's a definition list, and typically what we have in here is a definition term, And that's followed by a definition definition. I think I'm doing this right. It's how infrequently I use these. So there's that. And you can see how that comes out. So again, this, this was an unordered list. This was an ordered list. This is a definition list. And I really should have probably come in here and before I did this, made another H3 tag that said cooking instructions. Really baking, I guess you bake cookies, right? All right, there you go. And before the last one, we'll just come in here. We'll put another H3 that says some definitions. And there you go. All right. So I'd rather show you with some examples than just sit and read text to you. I mean, in my mind, that's a waste of your time. So there was the unordered list and the ordered list and the definition list. Now, there's other tags that are in here, as it says, for presentational purposes. There's a markup, which will change the color. 
There is an insert, a delete, a superscript, which raises it up a little, a subscript, below, small, which you often use inside of your um, footer area. The I tag and the B tag I've already talked about, but I said we're not going to use those. We're going to use the M tag instead of the I tag and the strong tag instead of the B tag. Now, here it talks about the difference between them. I'm not going to read this to you. I'm giving you my take on what's the difference between these things. All right, let's check my time again. All right, again, I'm at 30 minutes. I didn't get very far in here, but uh, I'm going to pick it up ne next on talking about links, so I'll be back with that shortly.